Hey everyone, I'm Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. A slightly, slightly belated Friday reads today. Yesterday was just not my day, let's just say that. So normally I film, you know, Thursday mornings and I just didn't get dressed yesterday. It was not great, but that's okay. Uh, today I am back at it. It is incredibly dark and gray and rainy, so I, <laughs> the lighting will be darker. I do have a light like right next to this lamp here, but it's not. Anyways, okay. Laura, focus. <laughs> um, okay. Hi. Whew. It has been an odd week. I've had some really up days where I was reading a ton. I read a couple of books in one go um, on Friday and, set and Sunday. That was a really good thing. I felt like I got my reading mojo back again. I used to do that all the time, so... It was nice to feel like normal again, but then there were a few days this week, like yesterday, where I just didn't really read anything or do anything. So anyways, let's just get cracking, shall we? Um, the song of the week this week is Electric Lady by Janelle Monet. I really like Janelle a lot, and I love this song. It just makes me incredibly happy, and I forget about it all the time. But I had my music on shuffle over the weekend, and... It popped up and I'm like, oh, why don't I listen to this more often? It's such a good song. I have no idea what any of the lyrics are, except for maybe one or two. And then the chorus, which is the title. <laughs> I don't know anything else, but it just makes me really happy. So Janelle Molnay, Electric Lady. That's it this week. And okay, on to books that I read. So the first one I'll talk about is Biblio Style by Nina someone or other. <laughs> I'll write everything below like I usually do. It's already went back to the library. It was just 10 days overdue. It's not a big deal. Um, but this was a coffee table about living with books. I, I liked it a lot. I think I gave it four stars. But as I was reading it, maybe the third or fourth library we were looking at, I mean, it's all beautifully photographed. It's from all over the world, but of course in the States, it's just the coasts. Um, and then, you know, like Portugal or Spain, some France, I think, you know, like all like the really popular big cities. I think there were some South Americas too, but it was all people who clearly had a crap load of money to spend on books and spend on their home and spend on their library. So while it was beautiful and interesting to look at and, you know, she talks to them about how they have things organized, if they do have them organized or um, where they shop, you know, that kind of thing. But it wasn't a uniform questionnaire for everybody. It was like you got some info from some people and then nothing from other people. Um, but it just was, uh, it made me a little mad, a little heart sick because there was so much money spent on these super schmancy books and on this library that looks a lot of the time like no one ever walks in that room. You know, it made me a little sad. And then also, like, where are the regular people like me and like a lot of you out there, too, who have a bunch of books in their houses? Like, we need to have a coffee table book with regular Joes, you know? If I had any skills <laughs> with photography, I would take that up. So it was fun to look at. I, If you can find it in your library, I would say absolutely recommend it. But I, I can't envision myself purchasing it. So I don't know. Anyways, that was Biblio style. Next up is The Witch's Book of Self-Care, Magical Ways to Pamper, Soothe, and Care for Your Body and Spirit by Erin Murphy Hiscock. Hiscock, excuse me. Beautiful little cover here. Um, this was a really, really fun, interesting read. Uh, I have another of her books, The House Witch, which I have not read yet. I might try and swing it over the weekend, but... Um, all of the ink is navy with burgundy, which is really beautiful, really lovely to look at and read. And what I appreciate about this book is that um, she doesn't go on too much about anything at all. It's all pretty short paragraphs explaining, you know, what grounding is and why it's important to ground and um, how you can do it quickly in like four or five steps and with virtually nothing, you know. A lot of the things that she uses in here are just regular kitchen things or essential oils, which a lot of people have nowadays. So 
I really liked it. And I already do a lot of this stuff automatically, um, not realizing that it was witchy or whatever. There are really easy recipes in here that don't make a huge amount. So there are recipes for, say, bath bombs. And it makes two to four. Like, you could do that yourself, for yourself, or for gifts for friends, and just make a couple of batches, and then you're done. And it's not expensive ingredients. So I really liked this. This was really practical for anybody, if you are a witch or not, or you just are into self-care. I recommend this very much. So, yeah, I really liked this one. And another one that I really liked is Homey by Dennis Smith. They are quickly becoming one of my favorite modern poets. I I read his other, um, other he has two other collections, um, Don't Call Us Dead. I read that a few months ago. Really enjoyed that as well. This one I really liked even more. Um, there were so many poems that made me like stop and pause and reread. And I read a couple of them out loud, which I only do if I really like a poem and I want to spend more time with it. Um, the, I just... I can see myself rereading this in future. I, I don't think this is for everybody, certainly. Um, Denez is very frank about the body and about sexuality and violence and um, grief and... <sighs> yeah. He's a younger modern poet. So I just... I really, really liked this a lot. I want to buy my own copy so I can reread it at some point in future. I think I really actually will reread it in future and like not the too far future. You know what I mean? Um, but I appreciate that he talks like a regular person. There is swearing and he has a song after a Wu-Tang song, which <laughs> I really liked. And I mean, I, if I'm correct in this and please tell me if I am incorrect in this, um, that a lot of this was spurred on by the death of one of his very close friends. <sighs> I really liked this. I just... The one that made me laugh the most and like chuckle and like nod my head is self-portrait as a 90s R&B video. Um, on faggotness is the one that I had to read out loud. It was so just powerful. And dogs was really good too. I mean... Almost everything in here I just really enjoyed. So, yeah, I highly recommend if you can handle frank language and frank talk about bodies and some swearing in life and reality for a lot of people. I mean, really recommend. I need to get a copy. And then the last one I think that I have read this week, I don't remember. I didn't check anything else, but whatever. It's Beating About the Bush by M.C. Beaton. This is the 30th book, that's right, 3-0, in the Agatha Raisin series. I love this series. <sighs> um, I do own a copy of this. I should say my mom does, technically, but hi, mom. Um, we always just buy the mass market versions, and this edition of the mass market that we got, I, I just bought it. I didn't look at it when I bought it. I just picked it up and bought it because I knew we needed it. Uh, it's printed so tightly, like the spine itself is incredibly tight. You can't even hardly open it. You'd have to break it every like 10 pages or so. Plus the way that the paper was cut, the words are really jammed into the spine. I should just recycle it. But I got this from the library instead so I can actually read it. Because, oh look, it opens and the font is legible. <laughs> like, whatever. Anyways, in this one, Agatha, who is still a P.I., Still, of course, pining after James because I think she'll just always pine after James, even though he's... I mean, in some ways they're perfect together, and in a lot of ways they really are not. Uh, but Agatha and her firm get hired at... Oh, what do they say they are? It's a company in Merster that developed a long-distance battery for electric cars. Uh, they're manufacturing them, I think, in Poland not sure, um, Eastern Europe and the factory there. And then, th so they get shipments and deliveries coming in all the time. And there was a uh, fire in their research and development building that burned it down. So he hires Agatha and her team to investigate who could have done this, who could have sabotaged them. You know, he gives them names of companies that don't seem to really 
care about it when they go to interview and people at the place are really hanky stuff is not adding up correctly and um so she investigates and of course they try and rope her into looking like an idiot so they can fire her so she can make an obvious public relations mistake and they can fire her and say look she's no good and they can you know kind of get her out of the way but it looks to all intents and purposes as if they have investigated this fire and supposed theft um but she knows they're doing this and she doesn't let them do it to her she's so crafty so on top of that there is <laughs> A sort of crazy donkey named Wizwaz that Agatha falls for. Uh, she's uh, both helpful and not helpful in a lot of ways. Tony um, is dating someone who wants to marry her, this doctor, young doctor who wants to marry her, and she doesn't really love him like that, and Agatha senses it and doesn't want her to get married because she wants her to stay loyal to the business, and that's going on, and then Agatha, of course, has a crush on somebody who she fancies and tries to go after him, and you know, usual zaniness and stuff in Carsley is the same as ever. And I, it's just like coming home to meet friends again. That's why I like this one. That's why I like the Janet Ivanovich series. I read, I started, I think in the teens. So I read them all in one go. And then I've just been reading one a year whenever they come out. So I, I just delight in those two. So the same thing every year, year and a half, we get a new Agatha. We have one more Agatha coming out next year. MC Beaton died at the very beginning of 2020, the very, very tail end of 2019. So we have one Agatha left for sure. We have one more Hamish Macbeth, which is my favorite of her two series, her two long running series. I just love Hamish Macbeth. And after that, I think they're going to be done. It makes me really, really sad. I keep doubling up words. I apologize, but it's just easy, fun reading. It makes me chuckle. I like catching up with everybody. I like seeing who really did it. You know, I... I just like these books. So that's everything I have finished for this week. I realized the last couple of weeks I didn't do any hauling. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> so let's do a quick haul, shall we? So from Book of the Month, I got two books. This one is just an extra that they have all the time, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I've already listened to this book. I gave it five stars, and I really wanted my own copy. I've been looking at half-price books. I've been there two or three times. Um, since they were opened up again with the pandemic and they don't have any copies. And I checked at um, online at a few places too and the used copies were almost as much as a new copy. So if I could get this for a credit at Book of the Month, I just did. So I have this just to have. I'm probably gonna reread it at some point and then make notes or whatever. And then the book that I picked for October is Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. This is the prequel to Practical Magic. Um, which I didn't like Practical Magic when I read it 10 plus years ago. And I love the movie. And I remember thinking, God, did I read this wrong? I think I must have read this wrong. And I still think I must have read it wrong because I, don't, I just feel like I did. I, had, I have a copy of the other one. What was it the one she put out a couple years ago? I do have a copy of that, which is a follow-up to Practical Magic. And then this one goes back to the 1600s with the original family members who were witches and whatever. The curse put on them, blah, blah, blah. So I have this for whenever I get around to it. Lord knows when that will be. Okay, and then at Danny's wedding, hey girl, she got everyone a book as a favor. It's personalized to them. I am so delighted by mine. I can't even tell you. I hope it fits in the screen. It's The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. I love Robin Hood. This is an Educator Classic Library Edition. So I've seen these before, but not really known what they were like. So they've got notes. I mean, it's the whole story in here. Illustrations and things. There are some full page. Oh, Danny's program for my wedding. Uh, there are some full page illustrations which look like they were originally not lino cut. What is that? What did Hogarth do? Etching? I can't find one to save my life now. Whatever. I have this. I'm so delighted by this. I can't even tell you. I just keep like touching the cover whenever I pass it like a crazy weirdo, which of course I am. Uh, I just, I'm so thrilled by this. Thank you so much, Danny. I, I adore this book. And then this is the Blame It on Doris at Aldi Books portion of the video. 
Poor Doris. Um, I think she can hack it though. So I've been following along her indie press project that she's doing with a couple of other people. And I either already owned books by them or like uh, the one I really, really wanted was Aftershocks about Puerto Rico. I have that on ebook. So I was going to get that one. I thought, no, no, no. And then she mentioned Milk Street Press. And I thought, oh, this sounds so familiar to me. I think I know this. Not realizing how much they published that I really already wanted. I really genuinely had no idea they published them. I don't pay attention to publishers. Just like I don't pay attention to authors so much. If a book sounds interesting, I want to read it. Like, I just don't care. So I placed an order at Milk Street Press. I really like them a lot. They do a lot of poetry. I'm nervous to publish, publish, nervous to purchase poetry blind. Um... I don't know, I just, I adore them. So I got three books from them. The first up is World of Wonders. Check out that cool cover. And I am gonna butcher this last name because I don't know how I wouldn't, but it's Amy, let's see, Nezakuma Tatil, let's say. Sounds good, right? Uh, so this is in praise of fireflies, whale sharks, and other astonishments. I love whale sharks a lot. I, I adore them. So. Beautiful inside. Let's look at that outside. Just plain with that teal foiling. I think there are illustrations in here. There are. This just sounds delightful, like a delightful, look at this. Catalog of interesting creatures from all over the globe. How cool. I'm gonna read this for nonfiction November for sure. It just looks amazing to me. Next up, is a collection of essays called Hearth, a global conversation on community, identity, and place, edited by Annick Smith and Susan O'Connor. So this features essays by, let's see, names I know, Angie Cruz, Deborah Magpie Erling, Jane Hirschfield, Pico, I, is it Iyer, 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 William Kitteridge, Bill McKibben, Barry Lopez, oh, uh, uh, tons of people. Natasha Trethaway, Terry Tempest Williams. This just sounds incredibly fascinating to me. I, I just happened upon it. I just saw it and I was like, oh my God, I need this book. So here's hoping I can start this up soon, very soon. With essay collections, I like to kind of string them out and not just jam them in like a regular book, but We'll see. And then this last one, I did not know that Milk Street or Milk, Milkweed, excuse me, Milkweed published this because I've wanted this for quite a while, but it's Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. This seems like it is so in my wheelhouse in so many ways. I am delighted to finally own a copy. So Braiding Sweetgrass. So that's all I hold. Not terrible. I mean, three were free slash gifts. I used a credit and three I purchased. So that's not awful for a couple of weeks. I thought I would just briefly talk about what's coming up for me the next week or so. So tomorrow is Dewey's 24 hour readathon this October 24th, I'm going to say. Third, fourth. Let's just say fourth. Uh, so Dewey's, in case you don't know, has been going for well over 10 years now. It's held twice a year in October and in April, usually the second or third weekend of the month. And people all around the world join in and participate on literally every kind of social media platform that there is. So I've been doing Dewey's for well over 10 years. I think I joined in the year after they started. So probably 2009. 2008, 2009. Um, and the goal is to read as much as you can during that day. It's not necessarily to read for 24 hours, which I have attempted before and gotten close, but you know, it's been a long time. I was much younger then. <laughs> but it's just an excuse for everyone to read together around the world. And there really is the sense of community that you are not reading alone by yourself. I just adore it. On the website, there are mini challenges every hour that people host on various blogs or social media or whatever. There are Instagram challenges. 
there you could do nothing but follow people and be a cheerleader and participate with everything else and never read and have a wonderfully fun day nerding out over book stuff. But I do a little of that and try to limit myself so I don't get distracted and I try to really focus on books. So I am working on the Golden Girls Murder Mystery Readathon, which wraps up on Sunday with a live show at 1 p.m. my time, which is Central Time. Um, so I'm working on stuff for that. I am working on the Falling Into Books, Fall Into Books, excuse me, Fall Into Reading. I'll get it right with the hashtag below. <laughs> the Fall Into Reading um, Challenge. I'm working on that. And I've just got some Victober stuff to finish up too. So I'll be working on these for sure. Plus adding in a ton of other, I don't, you know, who knows. So I'll be working on Rithering by Sea by Judith Russell. Goodnight Kiss and Goodnight Kiss 2 by R.L. Stein. Very educational. The Penguin Book of Women in Crime, edited by Michael Sims. The Dead Secret by Wilkie Collins, which I will have to read during the day because this is teeny, teeny print. Like, I, it's obviously a used copy. I didn't do this. I bought it this way online. Uh, but I will need my glasses and a bright light to read this for sure because I am that age. And I'll be working on this one too, The Case of the Missing Marquess by Nancy Springer. This is the start of the Enola Home series. I'm only that far. This lived in my purse for too long and I forgot to check it out again, so... So I'll be doing that. I think I'm going to try and vlog. You're going to see me looking not my best. Not that I ever look fantastic. I have no, you know, I know that I'm not Cindy Crawford. Uh, but I'll be in pajamas probably a lot of the day. <laughs> so um, I will do my best to vlog tomorrow and get that up um, next week. And I will, yeah, just kind of keep rolling on my stuff. My mom still has shingles. Things are healed up, but she's got a lot of nerve pain still, can't really drive, um, having a hard time, still exhausting. So it's slow, but there's little minute progress most days. So week six, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, that's all I got. I have talked for, wow, okay, 22 minutes. I'm going to shut up now. I hope you're all doing well and reading something fabulous. I hope you would participate in any one of the reading challenges going on right now or next month too. Um, hopefully I will see you guys and Dewey's. I'll be obviously vlogging, which you won't see it at, you know, in time. I'm going to also be posting hopefully on Instagram. It's such a time suck for me. And I'm hopefully going to be on Litzy as well. So hope you're all doing well and taking good care, reading something fantastic. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.